Hi guys, it's Brian. Uh, today we're going to talk about bladder management after a spinal cord injury. This is something that's going to affect a lot of you that are newly injured and just getting used to uh, how to deal with it. If you're paralyzed, your spinal cord is not allowing your brain to connect to your bladder like it used to. The bladder is a muscle and for an able-bodied person, that muscle will contract and completely drain the bladder. If you're paralyzed, sometimes your body will half drain your bladder or it won't drain it at all. So you can actually overfill your bladder. Uh, this is called neurogenic bladder. And a lot of people have this issue. Um, they get leakage, that happens a lot. Uh, so you might hear about a drug called oxybutynin, which is supposed to control that bladder spasming so you don't leak. Uh, so in order to drain your bladder, you usually will have to use a catheter. And a lot of paraplegics use these. These are intermittent catheters. And about six to seven times a day, I will drain my bladder with one of these. If you are a higher injury level and you don't have control of your hands, sometimes you will get what's called a suprapubic catheter. So the catheter goes directly into your belly. It drains your bladder throughout the day into a leg bag. But somebody who has hand function is usually set up with the intermittent catheters because it's a lot less invasive and you don't have to have a bag on your leg all the time. This is actually a hydrophilic catheter, which means in order to create the lubricant, you just fill it up with water and that activates the lube. Uh, when I would cath with a regular catheter and I would cover it with lube, it was really messy, I felt like. So this has been a better option for me. Before I will cath myself, I will wash my hands really well. And I use a antibacterial wipe. Uh, I use what's called a wet one. Uh, this is a travel wet one that I use when I'm away from the house. You can also get it in a tube, which I use at home. And I am draining my bladder into uh, usually a urinal if I'm at home. And the ideal volume that you wanna stick with is between 300 and 400 cc's. That's ideal. Any higher than that is a little too much and can cause you issues down the road. If I, I notice if I fill, overfill my bladder, I tend to leak more after a couple days because it kind of irritates it. So stick with the 300 to 400 range. Use This is the bag that hangs on the front of my chair. You might've seen this. But in this bag, I keep uh, about five catheters or so. I also keep a empty Gatorade bottle so I can drain my bladder into this uh, when I'm out. And I'll take the travel wet ones, obviously. This also has my wallet in it. It has um, some hand sanitizer because I can't always get to a sink to wash my hands. Uh, so that is really helpful for me. I keep this on the front of my chair, like I said. The only thing I do have to worry about when I'm out is having access to water because that catheter is hydrophilic. It does need the water. So I will fill it at a sink or sometimes I'll just carry a bottle of water with me. I always keep a bottle of water in my car just in case um, I'm out and I'm in the car and I need to cath. Uh, so that's what's been working for me for quite a while. I also wanted to talk about the sensational factor. I don't have the sensation that I can automatically figure out if my bladder's full. But I have developed this weird sense that when my bladder does get full, I get this like sick, sick sensation. And that is kind of what I use to figure out if I have to go to the bathroom. It's not foolproof. If you've been drinking, it doesn't work. Uh, so sometimes I will get that sensation. And by the time I get that sensation, my bladder is 600 cc's, which is way, way, way too much. So you cannot rely on that. At least I know I can't but it has been kind of helpful. That's something that developed after about six months or so after my injury. Your body kind of settles down um, within the first six to 12 months. So bowel will slow down a little bit. Your bladder will um, usually kind of chill out a little bit. <laughs> uh, another thing I do in addition to the oxybutynin is I get uh, bladder Botox injections. I've talked about that in another video. And that pretty much paralyzes the bladder. It's just like you would inject it into your you know, face. They do the same thing for the bladder and it allows you to retain a little bit more. So instead of leaking at 200 to 300 cc's, I'm able to get up to 400 to 500 without the leaking, which has been really helpful. So um, at nighttime, uh, a lot of the times I will just wake up on my own and cath 
If I don't drink a lot before I go to bed, I can sometimes make it through the night without having to get up. Uh, but again, it's weird. I've kind of developed that sensation where a lot of the times I'll wake up and I just have that sensation and I'll know I have to go to the bathroom. Um, it doesn't always work. That's what I kind of said before, but um, I've kind of relied on that a little bit since I've you know gotten used to being paralyzed. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm sure I missed some stuff, um, but I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.